Welcome to this Goldmine tutorial. My name is Peter Johnson. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to cover creating a simple dashboard in Goldmine. I'm going to split this into three parts. Um, I'm going to create two dashboards. Um, the first one I'm going to create uh, using two parts. The first part is just to create the information section. In the second part I intend to create a graph uh, chart that links to the information section. Part 3 I'm going to show you how to create a very simple dashboard from a SQL query that you may previously use. Uh, I've got an example I'm going to show you. So let's first uh, go in and see my uh, sample Goldmine system. Okay so here's my sample Goldmine system with a dashboard that I've created uh, previous to this just to show you what we uh, hope to achieve. This particular dashboard has a bit of a title, has a chart at the top and then some data within it showing based on uh, the information and as you can see this is based on forecasted sales by sales rep so I've added a few columns and you have some customizations to these columns and I'll show you that uh, during the creation of it. Uh, here at the end you can see the sales rep. Now what I've done in the chart is I've showed the sales rep uh, information with totals uh, for each of the uh, values uh, based on the amount of the forecasted sale and if we were to click on any of these uh, so if I click on Jane here you can see it will only uh, show Jane's uh, forecasted sales and if I click on master it will show master but if I refresh the whole dashboard at the top here it will create uh, the whole dashboard again with showing all the information prior to uh, drilling down by clicking on the chart. So the first part uh, of this session we're going to create the details section uh, based on forecasted sales in my system. You can see I don't have a lot in my test system but it, it shows you on the screen of course if you add more forecasted, forecasted sales they will show in this uh, area as well. So let me go off and create uh, a new dashboard. Uh, you can see I'm logged in uh, here as an administrator or the master user and um, I can uh, have an option here where it says create new dashboard and when I select that it opens up this uh, dashboard area where we're going to add the component parts and add the data that's going to show in those component parts. Uh, I always start with uh, creation of the data uh, that you're going to show. Now in the background it's going to create an SQL view uh, with information in. Now you don't have to be an SQL expert, you do need perhaps a little bit of knowledge about the uh, database structure but it does help you through with a little wizard. So to start off I'm going to create a new data source. This is the view, uh, the data it's going to pull uh, into a particular area and in my example that little table view that we saw. So I'm going to create a new table uh, data source. Uh, now in this little wizard it's going to run through uh, it gives you some choices of the type of data that you want to report on um, in this uh, dashboard. Uh, the one I'm going to do in part 3 is this manually typed but what they've kindly done in Goldmine is uh, given you some very useful uh, start points and here I'm going to go to open sales which are basically sales in the pending tab which are forecasted sales. Choose next here and then I'm going to give this data source a name so that I can go and select it later on. I'm going to call this Peter forecasted sales that'll do. Next. Now if you uh, are familiar with SQL uh, queries this first part of the uh, wizard is creating the select statement. Um, for those that aren't so familiar with SQL this is going to create the fields or columns that we want to see in this particular report. So if I choose add uh, you can see here I uh, have available a list of fields that I can go and choose from um, and again uh, what's quite useful here is there's a whole set of fields that you're most likely to use um, and in here I'm going to select my first example as the company name so you can see down here I've got company 
when this appears in the data format it will give it a column name you can change this if you wish which I might do on a couple of the others so I'm going to choose OK uh, then I'm going to choose and add another one um, this time I'm going to select contact so that's the uh, person's name uh, then I'm going to select the uh, amount field uh, and they've done it for you here amount um, I might actually change this to forecast amount uh, so what that's done it's changed the label of the column that's going to appear now I'm going to add a number of others okay so I've added some fields now um, that I want in the columns. Uh, I'm going to just talk her through a couple of these. Uh, I, I've chosen a couple of useful fields, uh, perhaps for reporting purposes. I've got activity month name, and I've also got activity year. I could choose the date if I want to, to but most of the time, when I run reports on forecasted sales, I just want to see the month and the year that that forecast is in. I've also added the account number here, uh, which will become uh, useful later on when we want to navigate to a particular record, and I'll show you that uh, uh, navigation, rather like a hyperlink if you like. So I'm going to choose uh, Next. Now this screen here uh, is the, uh, the if those that know uh, SQL queries, this is the where clause if you like, so this is the select statement, so I only want to see customers or I only want to see forecasted sales within a particular geographical location and again if I wanted to do that I could go and add a particular field such as uh, the uh, city field for example here and then choose the operator equal to London uh, for example but I'm not going to do that I'm going to skip this section because I want all of my forecasted sales this uh, section here, uh, um, this is known as the runtime parameters. I'm going to miss this out and, and cover this a little bit more detail in section uh, two uh, or part two of this uh, demonstration. Next, you could, if you wanted to, group uh, the records or sort them in a particular order. Again, I'm going to miss that out. I'm just going to keep this very simple. Finally, uh, the next screen creates the SQL query. Uh, that that wizard uh, going through that wizard has, has uh, generated and I can actually take a look uh, at the results of this and you can see here there's a preview of those results uh, in the way that I'd like to see them and you can see here as I mentioned it makes those column headings for you at this point I'm going to choose finish remembering what I called that particular uh, data source name so we've just created the data source I'm then going to uh, add a section to show that data source. So the type of component that I want to show the data within is a table. And I'm just going to simply click on this and drag it into the main dashboard area here. And I'm going to stretch it out to a particular size that I'd like to see my data in. You can stretch it past this uh, properties window. Uh, bearing in mind that when you do see this, it'll be full screen and you won't get this. A uh, little palette area over on the right. So once I've created that area, which is uh, essentially a table, I'm now going to bind to this the data source that I've just created. And very simply, I would right click and choose Edit Data Binding. And what that does, it presents me with all of the data sources that I've created. Um, or have in the system. You do get some of these out of the box of course because there are some sample dashboards in there. But the one I created earlier was this Peter Forecasted Sales and uh, here are all of the columns that I'd like to perhaps add to uh, this uh, uh, table area. So I can add these individually by pushing them across or I could just choose this little arrow button which pushes everything across and you will notice I've brought across that account number now you may not want to see it uh, so uh, in this example I don't uh, so I'm going to uncheck visible but I have to add it because I want to use this to navigate to the correct record some of you may already know that uh, the account number here is uh, the unique value for each record and it's the, the the bit that you could use to navigate to a record but I want somebody to be able to click on a particular field in this example company and I want to enable a hyperlink using the account number 
to navigate to the correct record and then choose OK. Let's have a look so far at the way this dashboard looks. So I'm going to choose View up here and you can see here I've got my table with the data from the data source and I've also got my hyperlink based on company that if I click on it it takes me to the correct record and I can see in this example there's a forecasted sale so you can see very simply in this uh, section we've created this table I can go and amend this slightly uh, we're going to amend two parts of this I'm going to give it a title I'm going to call it forecasted sales and we're also going to change the uh, table view of, of or the navigation view of how you get to this dashboard so you can see a heading here and also you've got the the dashboard name and we'll see this change so to do this I'm going to choose design I'm going to add the title and I'm going to simply check on this label and drag it into the main part of the screen stretch it out stretch it out a bit for a nice title now the information in here is controlled by the properties of this selected area and you can see down here there are some properties uh, one of the properties is the text within it and it currently will say label so I'm going to call it forecasted sales having done that uh, I might want to change the font size make it a little bit larger uh, and stand out a little bit more so I can go up here and I can change uh, maybe to bold, maybe 14 and choose OK. So if we go and have a little quick view of that, you can see on here I've given it a, a label. Back to design, I am now going to uh, create that navigation area so you can see it with an intuitive name. You'll notice I have not selected any part of the screen um, and the properties area defines the information about the whole dashboard and you can see a category here I'm going to call this samples and the dashboard name I'm going to call it forecasts so if I now go and view that you'll notice those properties that I've just edited created this section called samples or category and then uh, called the dashboard forecasts okay so part one of this tutorial has covered creating a data source adding a table to the dashboard binding that data to that table and also adding a title and customizing the properties so that's the end of part one of this dashboard creation. I will uh, also make available part two and three as described at the beginning of this section. If you do need to contact us here at Wizard Systems uh, for some assistance or training on this particular topic, or perhaps you have any questions or you'd like us to create a dashboard for you, which we can offer as a service, the contact details are there in front of you now. Thank you very much.